I left my windows open all night and nobody killed me. So I guess that's a good thing. since I filmed a vlog where I let a book decide what I would do for a week or for a weekend. This was originally inspired by Kayla from Books and Lala because she did a video where she picked random books, flipped through random pages, and she did whatever that page says. And I wanted to do my own version of it where I just pick one book and I let that book decide what I would do for a video. The book that I chose for this vlog is Leave the World Behind. This is a thriller book by Ramon Alam. I have no idea what the story is about. I didn't read the synopsis beforehand. I just randomly picked this book because it was one of the book of the month selections. Plus it's pretty short, so I figured I could read the majority of it over the weekend. So again, I had no idea what was gonna happen in this book. I just let the fate of my weekend rest in the story's hands. So here is what my weekend looks like following Leave the World Behind. I started reading the book on Friday and what I found out is that the story is about the main characters leaving the city and going on vacation for themselves by renting out a luxurious place to stay. That was when I knew that out of all the books I could have randomly chosen to decide my weekend, this was a very lucky one for me to randomly choose. The book goes into a lot of detail about the place that they're renting, including how they rented it in the first place. The house was brick painted white. The house looked old but new. It looked solid but light. Amanda had found the place on Airbnb, the ultimate escape, the ad proclaimed. It talks about some of the features inside the Airbnb that they say at, like the floors were white plank wood harvested from an old cotton mill in Utica, the pendant lamps hovering over the oak table. There was a great room with a television. It's essentially a place in this remote corner that's surrounded by trees and nature. Based on all of these descriptions, I had to look for an Airbnb that would be a close enough match to all of the features that were described. So let me show you the place that I ended up booking to match the book. I chose a home in a 1920s vintage building to match what the book said about the house looking old but new, solid but light. You can tell it's pretty old from the exterior of the building and when you head down the halls, but the space that I'm staying at still feels new because of the way that it's decorated. There's tons of natural light coming from the windows, which helps showcase the wooden floors, original crown molding, and a rich range of plants all around the space. This was the main appeal for me because the Airbnb they're staying at is surrounded by nature and lots of greenery, so I wanted to evoke the same elements in my surroundings. The book doesn't go too into detail about how the space is decorated, but there is a line that says the people who own this house were rich enough to be thoughtful. For me, my interpretation of that is artwork, paintings, even plants framed as paintings, and vinyl records hanging on the wall. The characters turn on the radio a lot to listen to music, so I am tweaking it a little bit because I don't have a radio, but the Airbnb does have a record player. And what's cool about this is that you pick out a vinyl classic and then you can link it to an advanced audio system so I can still listen to music as the characters do. And as for the rest of the space, I have the oak table that's mentioned in the book. I also have pendant lamps that are also described in the book and I really like this nice detail here. Last thing I gotta say about this place, and just to really nail in the details, the characters have to check in using a lockbox with a code, which is how I also got inside. So even the method to check inside the Airbnb was the same as the book. So that's my tour. We have the setup all ready to go and now I'm gonna read the rest of the book and figure out what I'm gonna do for the rest of my weekend. Good morning. I am starting off my day eating homemade breakfast and watching 90 Day Fiance on the TV. These are my morning plans because on the first day of their trip, chapter six starts off mentioning that no one had bought cereal, which means that the dad has to make breakfast on his own, hence why I made my own breakfast with HelloFresh. It also mentions the television was on, but no one was actually watching it. And what kind of perfect TV show can you put in the background besides 90 Day Fiance? Another thing I'm doing this morning is answering emails emails because the main female character spends her morning doing that too. This is actually very fitting because I have a couple of emails I need to respond to anyway. I'm not letting you screw and bitch have a baby. Oh, we 
great decision. Okay, let's see what I'm gonna do this afternoon. Amanda volunteered to go to the grocery. The store was frigid, brightly lit, wide aisle. She bought yogurt and blueberries. She bought sliced turkey, whole grain bread, that pebbly mud-colored mustard, and mayonnaise. She bought potato chips and tortilla chips and jarred salsa full of cilantro, even though Archie refused to eat cilantro. She bought organic hot dogs and inexpensive buns and the same ketchup everyone bought. She bought cold, hard lemons and seltzer and Tito's vodka and two bottles of $9 red wine. She bought dry spaghetti and salted butter and a head of garlic. She bought thick cut bacon and a two pound bag of flour and $12 maple syrup in a faceted glass bottle like a tacky perfume. She bought a pound of ground coffee so potent she could smell it through the vacuum seal and size four coffee filters made of recycled paper. She bought a three pack of paper towels and a spray on sunscreen and aloe because the children had inherited their father's pale skin. She bought those fancy crackers you put out when there were guests and Ritz crackers which everyone liked best and crumbly white cheddar cheese and extra garlicky hummus and an unsliced hard salami and those carrots that are tumbled around until they're the size of a child's fingers. She bought packages of cookies from Pepperidge Farm and three pints of Ben and Jerry's politically virtuous ice cream and a Duncan Hines box mix for a yellow cake and a Duncan Hines tub of chocolate frosting with a red plastic lid because parenthood had taught her that on a vacation's inevitable rainy day, you could while away an hour by baking a box cake. She bought two tumescent zucchini, a bag of snap peas, a bouquet of curling kale so green it was almost black. She bought a bottle of olive oil and a box of Entenmann's crumb top donuts, a bunch of bananas and a bag of white nectarines and two plastic packages of strawberries, a dozen brown eggs, a plastic box of pre-washed spinach, a plastic container of olives, some heirloom tomatoes wrapped in crinkling cellophane, marbled green and shocking orange. She bought three pounds of ground beef and two packages of hamburger buns, their bottoms dusty with flour and a jar of locally made pickles. She bought four avocados and three limes and a sandy bundle of cilantro even though Archie refused to eat cilantro. It was more than $200 but never mind. Why is this bitch buying so many things? Okay, I'm definitely not gonna buy all of these because that's just ridiculous. And also, I'm not gonna spend $200 on groceries. I'm only gonna get a few select items from the list that she has. Probably either the yogurt and blueberries and maybe the strawberries. You know, just to keep it simple, we're already eating homemade breakfast, so I don't know why she's buying all this extra crap. Oh my God, a few pages later, the dad says he's going to the store to get cereal for Archie. Your wife just bought like two months worth of food. Why are you going to the store so many times? Okay, it definitely seems like I have to go to the store now. The mom is saying, get something sweet, like a pie. Get a pie. Bitch, you just bought a cake. There is a Whole Foods that is a 10 minute walk away. And I feel like it would be only fitting to go to that Whole Foods considering that this mom just bought $200 worth of groceries. So I bet you she shopped at Whole Foods. It didn't say where they shopped at, but the energy that I'm getting from this soccer mom character, she definitely shops at Whole Foods. Let's go get some pie. So the book didn't specify what grocery store exactly that the main character went to, but I figured from the absurd amount that she spent on groceries and from her demographic as a character in general, she probably was shopping at Whole Foods. So I went over to the Whole Foods in the spirit of buying over expensive groceries to honor her character. I got blueberries and strawberries, organic, they are much more expensive than they should be. But believe it or not, there was another container that was like this tall 
and it was $25 and I was like, hell no. I tried to look for the cheapest one and this was $6, which is still pretty pricey for a tiny container in my opinion. And then because she was requesting her husband to buy something sweet from the grocery store, like pie, I got a haul ass pie. And those were the only items I got because I refused to spend $200 on groceries at a Whole Foods. It would be very much against my principles. But these are still some of the same items that the main character got. So I will be enjoying my little treats tonight. Let's see what else I should do tonight. Clay was supposed to be reviewing a book for the New York Times book review and had brought his laptop. He only needed 900 words. Clay was diligent, but also he knew it's a little lazy. He wanted to be asked to write for the New York Times book review, but didn't want to actually write anything. That is a big mood. Okay, so the husband needs to write a book review, which is actually very fitting. I mean, I already have a booktube channel where I do book reviews and it has to be 900 words. This shit is gonna be an essay. This pie is actually really good. I tried the fruit, it was basic. Not worth six dollars. Anyway, I gotta work on my book review. Actually, by the time I post the video, my review for it will already be up. It's the Kissing the Coronavirus book because everyone has been requesting me to make a video about it. So I'm gonna read my pie and I'm gonna read about the coronavirus as a hot specimen that will get his own pie in order to do my book review, of course. day because in chapter six the family decides to spend a day at the beach. I really wish I had known that sooner otherwise I would have actually packed properly for this trip but I guess the whole point of this is that it's supposed to be spontaneous so we'll make do with what we have and it says that Amanda was spreading sunscreen on Rose's back. That's one of the things that I didn't bring sunscreen but I did find an umbrella in the Airbnb so I think I'm gonna use that to shield myself. She's also bringing a tote bag and I happen to have one with me. Chanel gave this to me for my birthday so I'll I will use this as my tote bag. And I don't actually have beach towels, but the Airbnb came with its own towel. Their daughter, Rose, is bringing three books for one afternoon at the beach. Now that is actually the only thing I'm actually prepared for because I have one book and then two and then three. So I will bring these three books with me. Thank God their daughter is a fucking nerd. Also, I don't know what that says about me that I came prepared with only books and not anything else. Ooh, they're bringing snacks along their trip too. You know what? I'm bringing a slice of pie with me. I'm not really a beach person, so I kind of wish that this family just stayed inside and watched 90 Day Fiance instead. That would just make my life so much easier than trying to do an impromptu beach trip. I don't even have to do this. I don't know why I'm just making it harder for myself with this video. So Amanda is packing lunch, a blanket and towels and water. Got my water bottle right here. Okay, let's go.
update as to what's going on in the book. Not really much is going on. I know that it's a thriller book, so I'm sure something shady or sketchy is gonna happen soon, but for the most part, in the beginning, it's a pretty normal vacation. I do wanna mention though, there's a part that says, Amanda had a feeling like being watched, but there was no one out there watching her. Was there? An involuntary shiver at the very idea, then a retreat into the adult illusion of safety. So she feels like someone is watching her. Wouldn't it be so creepy if a face popped up right there? But you know what? For the purpose of trying to be as close to the book, I'm going to keep this door open all night and I'm going to keep the windows open all night too, just so that in case anyone wants to watch me secretly from afar, like I'm in a thriller book, they totally can. I'm 100 pages in now and by this point, there has been a blackout and a couple has shown up to their Airbnb and they say that they they are the owners of the place and they had to come back because of the blackout that happened. Amanda is like internally freaking out and acting like this is her own home even though literally the people who own the home have shown up to the door. But Amanda is acting very haughty about it. And the weird thing about it is that she keeps on not believing that they could have possibly owned this nice house just because they're an elderly black couple. And for some reason, she just can't imagine a couple like them owning this house and I'm like what the fuck is that supposed to mean why is Amanda acting like such a Karen you know what after spending $200 at the grocery store, I'm not surprised by her behavior at all. Amanda is such a weird bitch. At least she didn't get murdered. Otherwise I would have to get murdered too. And I don't know how I would be able to pull that off logistically. Good morning, it is the last day of my trip. I'm gonna head back. I'm gonna go out with style, check out my fit today. I just wanna be an anime girl, so I'm really just channeling that in me. Update related to the book. I left my windows open all night and nobody killed me. So I guess that's a good thing. I have one hour left before I have to check out, but I do wanna note the last thing that I will be doing related to the book is an excerpt that I found in the pages that I was reading last night. Amanda is giving me weird racist vibes because she has just been acting so standoffish and rude against the black couple. There's a part where they're making conversation. They're talking about their kids and the woman says, Maya, her daughter, is very passionate about it. The boys will start their goodness in only a couple of weeks, I suppose it'll be. Her husband says, it can't be already. And then she says, September. Ruth said it with hope. And then in the next paragraph, it says, why did Amanda think of the earth, wind, and fire song? Or why did the thoughts seem racist? No, some of their best friends were not black. Their friend Peter was married to a woman named Martika, whose mother had been a famous black model in the 1970s. Their neighbor on the ground floor was black, but also transgender or non-binary. Or Amanda always referred to this person by name just to be safe. Jordan, so good to see you. Jordan, how's your summer going? Jordan, it's been so hot out lately. I was like, huh, Amanda, are you okay? Maybe if you're thinking frantically about all of the diverse friends, you have in your group, that should be a red flag for you. But you know what? My first red flag for you was when you bought $200 worth of groceries. I knew there was something suspect about her from the start. It just didn't sit right with my spirit. So yeah, believe it or not, I am 20 chapters into this book and really not much has happened other than them going on this vacation and them acting really weird and neurotic and suspicious around each other. Really nobody has gotten murdered yet, hence why I haven't gotten murdered yet. So I'm gonna conclude the vlog with that rendition of Earth, Wind, and Fire just to honor Amanda and her weird racist thoughts.
before I end this video, I want to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this vlog. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. There's tons of classes ranging from productivity to design to financing, and there are even classes for gardening and taking care of your plants. So just to go along with the theme of this entire apartment, I want to go ahead and mention a class called Gardening 101, a guide for growing and caring for plants. This is a super friendly beginner class and it covers basic gardening concepts and plant propagation techniques like seed starting, divisions, and cuttings. You'll get to learn more about garden planning and maintenance and plant harvesting and storage. It's the perfect class to take if you're interested in learning how to take care of plants. So if you're interested in that class or any of the other classes on Skillshare, the first 1,000 people who click on the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium classes. Don't forget to unsubscribe from my channel and goodbye.